that way. So we recapping uh, the yesterday's learning. We discussed about measure phase. We understood data types, right? There are basically two types of data. Continuous data and another one is discrete data or attribute data. Continuous means the measurable characteristics. Attribute means, attribute or discrete means countable characteristics. Like number of parts rejected, number of students passed, or number of machines breakdown, number of customer compliance, number of tickets raised. These are all discrete data. Continuous data means measurable, right? See, like the temperature, pressure, the time taken to complete a work, right? The strength of the material, these are all continuous data. We understood data type. We also understood that we should have a clear plan before collecting the data, right? That which is known as data collection plan. We must clearly you know, define everything well in advance. What is the operational definition? In which unit of measurement we all must measure? And uh, in what frequency we must collect data? And every time we collect data, how many data points we should collect? And we also understood that the data points or the sample size can be anywhere from 2 to 25. Minimum 2 and 2 and 2 up to 25. So, but then with the proper uh, sampling plan, even with a sample size of 2 or 3 might serve the purpose, right? And uh, that is called a data collection plan, operation definition, data type, sampling technique, and all of this. And then the next thing we understood is measurement system validation. The measurement system should be capable enough to collect unbiased reading. Otherwise, what happened? The bias in the measurement system will not allow us to understand the baseline correctly. The intensity of the problem, we will not be able to understand if we have a very weak measurement system. So even before collecting the data, it's a good idea to validate your measurement system. For that purpose, what we do is, we do a pilot data collection. We do a pilot data collection and try to understand how much bias our reading, our you know, measurement system can bring. What is the maximum amount of bias permissible? We understood yesterday. Maximum 10%. permissible is? 10%. 10% of the working range. And even before calculating the bias, you should calculate the consistency in your measurement system. The consistency in your measurement system. If it is highly inconsistent, then the uncertainty will be more, which is nothing but another form of error. Only after controlling the inconsistency, you must try to control the bias. Right. So in order to understand the consistency, we introduced uh, you no know, terminologies like repeatability error and reproducibility error. If, if an appraiser is inconsistent within his readings while measuring the same thing again and again, then the error is known as repeatability error. If there are multiple appraiser or multiple measurement system measuring the same thing, and they don't agree to each other, the inconsistency is known as reproducibility error. Reproducibility. All of you understand, right? So the repeatability yes. error and reproducibility error, if you sum them together, it is known as precision error. It is known as precision error, which means the consistency is known as precision. If you lag in terms of consistency, we call it as precision error. The precision error, we compare against the working range or the tolerance. So we get a ratio, precision tolerance ratio. We call it as gauge r and r. This gauge r and r, first of all, should be less than 10%. Then you should be able to calculate the bias. And again, the bias, depending on the nature of the bias. If it is constant, you can eliminate the bias. How can you eliminate the bias? By calibrating your data. By calibrating your data. Or you want to completely eliminate the bias from your measurement system, you can calibrate your measuring instrument. 
over and above you can take best care of the measuring instrument you can follow the usage instruction with all of this bias can be eliminated so by all means you ensure the total error is lesser than 10% but if the bias is not constant then uh, if it is very dynamic then the situation we will become very complex then you may have to increase the frequency of calibration mm -hmm. all right and then we moved on to the measurement of the baseline we understood different tools there one is dpmo defects per million opportunity another one is traditional yield first pass yield and what is the third one rolled throughput yield so the difference between traditional yield and the first pass yield is in first pass yield we don't include the reworked items in our output we will subtract the reworked items and then only we calculate the yield that's how the first pass yield differs from the traditional yield out of the two which is best your first pass yield is first pass best. yield yeah mm -hmm. we need to be that means we are trying to do things right at the first time there is no point of doing rework and then you know uh, achieving the target yield you must try to do that in the first attempt itself and then uh, rolled throughput yield you know when to use if processes are connected in sequence then we multiply the first pass yield of all the stages to get the rolled throughput yield which is otherwise you no know, uh, can be calculated in a simple manner the final output divided by the initial input final output the output at the final stage divided by the input at the initial stage this is also equal to your rolled throughput yield so whether it is yield or dpmo somehow we got the baseline value of our process performance now we can move on to the analyze space in analyze space the goal is to find out the root cause root cause for the gap in performance root cause for the gap in performance and for that the, we also understood you know certain terminology possible causes then potentially potentially critical causes then finally validated critical causes possible causes are different from i mean the potentially uh, critical causes are critical different from causes possible causes possible means you know anything that could have caused the problem any factor that could have been the reason for the problem but even though there are hundreds of factors that can affect your output when you are actually carrying out the project only very few factors are out of your control or out of your focus so you suspect those factors to have caused the problem right so those factors are known as potentially critical factors those potentially critical factors are segregated and then we verify them one by one when you experimentally verify the potentially critical factors for its criticality the procedure is known as hypothesis testing the procedure is known as hypothesis testing once the verification is satisfactory even after the experimental verification if you still believe that that is the root cause yes then you can con conclude that as the root cause and proceed with the next step where you try to understand the relationship what kind of relationship each of the root cause has got with your why positive or negative and then what is the percentage contribution for that we we study a tool known as or we use a tool known as correlation and regression analysis which we will be discussing today and that will also complete our analyze space and then the improve and control will become much easier and we will try to uh, understand the overview of the improve and control preferably with a case study and that will complete our today's agenda so this is what is the dmac define measure analyze improve and control so any any specific question any anybody would like to ask before we proceed with the measure i mean analyze based tools any question specific question if you have noted any question yesterday and no, you you forgot to ask do you want to ask now you are most welcome
okay so that means there are no questions so we move on to the analyze space slides just give me a minute so yesterday i i have shown you my slides what are the tools in the analyze space can you recall the tools which you have understood yesterday and we are going to discuss them one by one today brainstorming on. very good brainstorming excellent why why analysis why why analysis very good then brainstorming cost and effect diagram what is that come again cost cost come. and effect diagram very good cost and effect diagram it's no fantastic so cost and effect diagram this is also known as fish bone diagram it's also known as fish bone diagram or cost and effect diagram so these are these are the tools that will help us to find out the possible sahi hai nahi aisa nahi ho possible factors so i'm also sharing my screen so these tools are not that much difficult you might be already using in your you know current projects in your uh, workplace so instead of uh, learning them theoretically let us discuss those tools in a very practical interactive manner right you can see here list of possible factor brainstorming why analysis i should add one more thing here cause and effect i mean cause and effect diagram yes cause and effect diagram is brought here so let me change it straight away cause and effect diagram is one thing cause and effect matrix is another thing so i'll make those changes yeah. so i will put the cause and the effect diagram here so then here what we can have is cause and effect matrix or an easy one the impact control matrix the impact control matrix so so the first three you know very well and then uh, the impact control matrix null hypothesis alternate hypothesis type one type two error probability of significance test of averages test of proportion and uh, correlation analysis and regression analysis so we are not going to discuss all of them here as a you know part of the level program but definitely will be covering all of this in the advanced modules so this is what we will be doing in the analyze phase the recap points okay so now let us uh, try to understand this particular step possible x factor using the why of brainstorming why we analysis cause and effect analysis and then followed by the impact control matrix so instead of going through the slides let us take a problem which all of us can understand and then try to you know try to uh, apply some brainstorming try to apply some why we analysis or try to you know visualize in the form of a fishbone diagram so can you tell me some problem which we all can discuss can we talk about obesity all of you all of you are comfortable with that right yes so we must we must first of all understand what is obesity can somebody tell me what is obesity what is obesity a person who is overweight than his body mass index okay so there is an ideal weight right for uh, according to the height and the excess weight above the ideal weight is known as obesity right that's what we call it as obesity so basically we are talking about weight reduction the prop the pain metric is the excess weight is the pain metric all of you understand your why all of you understand yes, sir. yeah yes, sir. so after uh, doing the baseline measurement and one week 15 days study about your own body weight you understand you have extra 20 kg weight you are carrying additional 20 kg in your you no know, in your body which is not at all required 
so you know what this extra 20 kg will do can bring all all diseases isn't it so you wanted to eliminate that and now i want each one of you to contribute because all of us to some level we all have this obesity right except maybe very few we all have let us really you know uh, utilize this time properly to figure out some of the possible root causes possible factor what could have made us to become obese or what could have made us to gain those extra kgs which is actually not required for proper functioning of our body shall we do this exercise all of you can you give me yes. a guarantee you will spend this time yes sir right uh, one side india south africa is playing another side many things are happening but i want your attention on this particular problem right i want you to be focused just think for few seconds 10 15 seconds and just find out one big reason you no know, according to you which could have caused obesity right in general so that reason you can type it in the chat box improper yes. diet improper diet, diet. Yes. yeah you are right shivani you can put it in the chat box let all of us you know keep an eye on the chat box we get some useful tips to set our health right isn't it so excess consumption of food people are consuming food more than you know the requirement over consumption then unhealthy lifestyle and to the extent possible try to be very specific if you again say obesity and there is no use what could have caused right unhealthy lifestyle so you can you can better make it specific that's what we studied is it at ctq when we when we want to convey anything we have to be very very specific we have to make it measurable less workout yes that is measurable lifestyle and hectic work hours oh the stress in the stress level in the you know work that is expressed as the work hours sedentary lifestyle people are not you know moving a lot physical workout missing lack of sleep imbalanced diet yes proper nutri no nutritions are not getting lack of knowledge about food genetics and then drinking water and uh, junk food lot of oily food stress too much consumption of the food more junk foods excess protein consumption oh this is also a reason so eating too much processed food including sweets during diwali festival so diwali is ahead you have to be careful all right now see all of you can you see how powerful the tool is isn't it how much time we spent we spent about 3 4 minutes isn't it yes. are we are we able to list out so many uh, factors which could have caused obesity Yes, all of so. most of them are correct isn't it most of them are correct i i i i think uh, all of them are correct only certain things you know got repeated so this is the power of the tool brainstorming but what's important is people who are participating in your brainstorming session should first of all understand the problem have a thorough understanding of the problem otherwise if you are if you ask them to think about the causes somebody will go to the extent of you know, thinking about the solution that's not the purpose purpose is now we need to figure out we need to think about the causes problem is already understood now the time is for causes not for the solution i could see all of you thinking in the right direction none of you know uh, uh, crossed the boundary you all wrote exactly about the causes and you can simply name them x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and so on this is known as listing all possible x factor yeah. depending on the nature of the problem will you be able to call people for the brainstorming session do you think you are competent enough to call the relevant people yes or no yes sir yes sir no. do you think that is very important yes sir yes. very important right that's why no we 
we also consider obesity here because health is important to all of us. So that's the reason why all of us, you know, uh, we're thinking in a proper direction and sharing the valid point. Same manner, the person who is conducting the brainstorming, he should brief all of them one more time about the problem and about the consequences so that people can really, you know, spend their time in finding out the possible expert. Right? And please don't invite irrelevant people. Irrelevant people. People who are not connected to the problem. Or people who really don't want to solve the problem. Some people, you know, may, may not be supportive at all. Do you want to include them also in your uh, brainstorming session? No, sir. No, sir. It is better no, to... No, no. Or otherwise, before, uh, you know, uh, inviting them for the brainstorming session, see to that you have motivated them properly to support you are you are uh, you have to motivate them by explaining the importance of the project you are doing this is called a stakeholder analysis and stakeholder management so all of you understand very very important otherwise certain people will completely hijack the discussion and they will be talking you know they, they'll be talking and they will also ensure others also talking irrelevant things you could you could notice several times in meetings isn't it Somebody yes, sir. completely hijacking the discussion. No, the purpose is not that. So brainstorming is a very, very simple tool, but extremely powerful. Extremely powerful if used properly. That's we have that we have witnessed right now in the chat box also. And brainstorming can be of two types. One is structured brainstorming, another one is unstructured brainstorming. So what we had right now is a unstructured brainstorming. Am I right? Absolutely, there are no condition. Anybody can, anybody can uh, share their viewpoints, and some of them have not even participated. But we really did not mind, right? Because we we don't want to add any condition. But I I still I remember I mentioned one condition. What is that? Each one of you should share one point, isn't it? So that one condition. Other than that, absolutely, there are no additional condition. If you keep things, uh, you know, completely liberal. People can, you know, randomly uh, give, share their views, no specific, uh, you know, uh, priority order. Anybody can speak anytime and anybody can give any number of uh, reply. Absolutely no conditions. Now the brainstorming should be called as unstructured brainstorming. Suppose you want to go with certain, you know, seniority, order of seniority. Senior people first should share the view, then the middle level, then the lower level. And then, and then you know, you you put you add additional condition. Then the brainstorming will be known as structured. All of you understand the difference between structured and unstructured brainstorming? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Both yes. have some, both has some plus and minus. So whichever is more appropriate, whichever is more appropriate, you can use it. You can always switch. So, um, structured. You can always switch between structured brainstorming. Yeah, you, should, you can also switch from uh, structure to unstructured, and again unstructured to structure, depending on the necessity. Oh, First yes. 15 minutes, it can be unstructured brainstorming. And then next 15 minutes, it can be structured brainstorming. Do you get my point? Right? And uh, right. yeah, and uh, absolutely, you, you need to think according to the, uh, no, uh, real-time requirement, right? And another important thing is don't discourage anyone during brainstorming because the purpose is to gather ideas. The purpose is to gather ideas about the root cause. Don't worry whether they are correct or wrong. You don't have to correct them. Your job is only to listen to them and then record all their inputs. Then there are reputations. Later on, you can eliminate. There are some wrong opinions. You can eliminate. But at the time of brainstorming, you are not supposed to discourage anyone. All of you understand? Yes, will sir. You be able to, will you be able to conduct a very good brainstorming meeting when you are doing your first project? This is you know, the first step in the analyze space. Keep all the relevant people 
ask their opinion they will step certainly know the root cause isn't it yes sir. only thing is you know they are not they may not be very sure they, whether exactly this is the uh, root cause or not but definitely they will have a doubt so in this manner you can do it and tell me since we have taken a very uh, simple case of obesity and we are able to think well do you think the same logic will work with respect to our uh, technical problem also hmm. depends will on the situation it will definitely work because we are going to only involve the stakeholders in the meeting isn't it not you know someone uh, some x and y people who are really st stakeholders they are somehow related to the problem if you still think you know you your people lag in terms of the knowledge then what can you do training you can... come again come again trainings we can give trainings to our trainings right now right now this is you know analysis you can think of uh, inviting some sme subject matter expert yeah. right some dietitian you can call you can call some dietitian for the meeting you can call some you know nutrition specialist for the meeting they will throw light how much protein required what kind of food you know are uh, good for the health and what kind of food are not good for the health right so so you can always invite the subject matter experts just half an hour one hour meeting they can just share nowadays you have uh, the technology you can have the brainstorming in the zoom also people can join from any other uh, you know any part of the country so it's not a big deal hope all of you are clear with this what is that the first step which is listing possible x factor and the tool used is brainstorming now so much information is available in the chat box and in order to make it simple and then people you know help people uh, thoroughly understand the inputs you can visualize it in the form of a diagram because one diagram can replace 1000 words one diagram can replace 1000 words so for that purpose you can think of drawing a diagram on your whiteboard which is known as fish bone diagram which is known as fish bone diagram a fish will obviously have a head in the head portion of the fish you should write about the problem in the head portion of the fish you should write about the problem mathematically the problem is nothing but y variable problem is nothing but y variable the bigger the project y once the y is described in the head of the fish then there will be a main bone there will be sub bone and each bone can be considered as a specific category each bone can be considered as a specific category normally people go for 6m you know what is 6m men machine material <coughs> method measurement and then finally mother nature but again here there is no hard and fast rule you can change the 6m into 4m or you can change the 4m into 3m or you can you can have something completely new also you don't have to use any of the m depending on your domain let us say it is a software development project right so now customer requirement everything related to the customer requirement is one category and the technology used to to offer the solution so that can be another category then the employees something like that suppose your project is to improve the training effectiveness now i will have the categories like this course material trainer and then participants and then assessment and then the mode of training do you understand these are the categories under which i will identify the x factor now the step number 
is completed to our satisfaction because we have a clear picture of the pain metric and the possible X factor. What can go into your process? So, no, what can go into, into your process as an input or as a process condition is now visualized. Because any one of the input or any one of the process condition is not, not you know, appropriate, your Y is under trouble. Hope it is clear to all of you, right? All of you understand? I will also show the slides so that you know yeah. you can match your understanding with the slide material also. And before that, I would like to show you a short video which can help you understand why why analysis. It can help you understand why why analysis. Can somebody tell me what is the purpose of why why analysis? Why why analysis? To understand, to understand the root cause in a better manner. Very good. To understand the root cause in a better manner. Sometimes, you know, people might tell some, may try to tell something, but they may not come to the point. Right? It and you may be confused with the sim yeah. uh, symptoms. Very good. You ultimately, you wanted to measure everything. And when you want to measure, you should measure the causes yes. and not the symptoms. So, we use YY analysis to peel away the layers of symptoms, thereby we gain the about the causes. Right? Causes are different, symptoms are different. Yes, sir. Causes are different, symptoms are different. So, let's watch a video which can help us to understand YY analysis. And after watching the video, we'll again discuss the same thing with the slide material and I'm sure you will definitely be able to connect. What is the problem? That light which was illuminated on the statue attracted those midgets, which in turn attracted the spiders. Uh, that's why the birds used to come and eat them. And, uh, uh, so these are causes. So the problem is? Problem was building. So the building some, was damaged. Part of the building was yeah. decayed. Yeah. Yeah. Clean. Yeah, something like a monument is you uh, know deteriorating it's it's losing lo losing its you know uh, good appearance so the maintenance team they decided to conduct the yy analysis and finally they the analysis led to a very useful information the lighting method has been changed you understood the you no know, story so we will we'll see that in the form of slides now So brainstorming, I think you can now see my slides. Yeah. So brainstorming means you are making multiple brains to think about a particular problem so that they can help us to identify the causes. Always two brains can think better than a single brain, right? So always invite people and then have a discussion. It can be structured. It can be unstructured. Now the YY analysis, this particular tool is actually developed by Sakichi Toyoto, right? But 1979 onwards, it gained the popularity. According to him, if you ask the question why five times the nature of the problem, the solution, sorry, the causes, sometimes even the solution will become very, very clear. So you can use five-way analysis in the analysis space also, as well in the improve phase also, right? It depends on uh, how we think, right? Sir, one question. Yes. Uh, what, if, what if somebody is getting answer by asking only three or two whites? Yeah, not a problem. The, the job is done. It's not compulsory that you should always go for five whites. At the same time, it's not compulsory that you should stop at the fifth way. You should stop once you understand the purpose is done. If you want to understand the cause and if people have thrown enough light, then your why ends there. But if still things are not clear, you can always go for the next why. Only, you know, it is called as fifth why because most of the time, before the fifth why, the root cause will be clear. You will be able to understand the root cause. 
so there is no necessity to go up to the fifth wire clear yeah thank you yeah so now the same video is tabulated as a y y analysis now i will ask the question and one of you can read the answer on the right side look at the problem one of the monument is deteriorating now the first question why is the monument deteriorating now you can read the answer one of you it is harsh, harsh chemicals are frequently used to clean the monuments okay harsh chemicals are used now my next question to you is why are harsh chemicals needed now you can read for clean of the large number of bird dropping on the momentum uh, sorry monument mono, 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 mono. So large number of bird droppings are making you to use the harsh chemicals. So now my next question to you is, why are there large number of bird droppings, particularly on the monument? Now, somebody can read this. Because the large population of spiders in and around the monument are a food source to the local birds. Oh, large population of spiders in and around the monument you know, are the food source. Now my next question, why is there a large population of spiders in the area of the monument? Come on. Because swarms of insects on which the spiders feed are drawn to the monument at dusk. Yeah. So large swarm of insects on which the spiders feed are drawn to the monument. So my next question is, why are swarms of ins insects drawn to the monument? Now, the last the lighting of the monument in the evening attracts a lot to the insects. Oh, lighting of the monument. We all have noticed, isn't it? Sometimes, particularly yes. during the rainy season, no, a lot of insects comes to our uh, house also. So that is be mainly because of the lighting. Same manner, they also had some spotlights, very powerful spotlights, you know, around the monument. So the insects uh, got attracted. And so there are spiders. And so there are birds. And so there are bird droppings. And so chemicals. So now you have to break the chain. Now, what is your understanding after uh, doing this YY analysis? Do you want to use more chemicals to keep your you know, monument uh, shiny? Or do you really want to break this chain? We need to break we'll this have, chain. We'll have so to that, yeah, so that we'll it have becomes, balance. So that it becomes a permanent solution. Otherwise, you will be simply you know, taking action on some of the symptoms, but not on the root cause. The root cause is the lighting. So the lightings are rearranged. The timing is reduced because if you are the first one to switch on the light in the area, obviously every insect will come to your uh, building only. So the solution to the problem is change how the monument is illuminated, right? The lighting arrangement as well as the lighting time. So look at you know the way the thinking has changed because of the YY analysis. <laughs> this is also a very, very powerful tool. And similarly, another scenario you can easily understand by reading, you know, the lines here. The campus, the factory, roads are always dirty. We normally think that if the roads are dirty, the housekeeping is not functioning properly, isn't it? Either we think that the housekeeping is not functioning properly or the housekeeping staffs are not sufficient. So we may have to hire. So this is what we normally think. But the reality is, why the roads are dirty? There is oil leakage. Why there is an oil leakage? There is a leakage in the oil tanker used by the company. And why there is a leakage in the tanker? Poor maintenance. And why it is poorly maintained? Because untrained and careless drivers. So there is nothing to do with the housekeeping department. The problem is with the driver's you know, uh, attitude. So the training has to be conducted for the driver, like some of you told and so that they can take care of the maintenance of the vehicle and then the problem can be permanently solved. Hope all of you understand how you can use YY analysis, right? It can see all these tools can be used, you know, uh, in an integrated manner also. Brainstorming will be happening. 
Why by analysis will also be happening? And parallelly, one person will be drawing it on the board also as a fishbone diagram. All three can happen at a time. Yes, uh, Adip, you can ask your question. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sir. Sir, a very quick question. Uh, now, there might be an instance when solving an issue or solving one problem uh, might actually pave way to another problem, right? For example, now when we were talking about how in that monument area, if we uh, delay the lightings or delay the, uh, when we switch on the lights, then that could prevent, uh, you know, the damaging of monuments. But at the same time, it might lead to a safety issue when people are going around during the night time, then they can't see things because some of the lights will be switched off. So what can we do during those instances when solving one problem can actually uh, lead to another? Correct. Very good question. So that we need to take care in the next phase. The next phase is improve phase, where our focus is completely on the solution. Right? We will try to develop possible solution, like here, possible causes, possible solution. This is one of the solution. This is one of the solution. There can be similar other solution. We'll develop all the solutions, write all of them, and then we prioritize them, which can be the better one yeah. in the current prevailing condition, which can be the better one. And not, not only that, we'll also try to validate the solution. Like you exactly said, by solving a problem, you should not manufacture a brand, no, two other brand new problems. So the risk level, the risk level has to be validated before and after. You understand? And we have a tool known as FMEA, Failure Mode and Effect Analysis. In this condition, what is the chance of failure? After the improved condition, what will be the chance of the failure? Say, for example, we can, uh, we can, uh, at the time of admitting itself, we can tell all of you that attendance is compulsory. Yes or no? But yes, we are sir. not telling that. You can join, you can uh, attend the session, you can watch the recording, because we know that, you know, that might affect your admissions, yes or no? Again, after joining the program, we can we can always tell that, you know, you must be on the video throughout the session. These are, these are you no know, certain ways by which you can improve your training effectiveness, yes or no? But then when I actually make it, when I implement it, that can lead to some other consequences. Right? So you need to evaluate the plus and minus. How many plus is there if you, if you request people to come on video, if you give them the freedom to turn on the video, to unmute themselves whenever they want. Otherwise, we can, you can always conduct it as a webinar. You can also play a recording. There are different ways you can you know, uh, solve a problem. But each one has got certain number of plus, certain number of minus. The solution that has more plus and less of minus will now be considered for implementation. All right? And also for the minus, you need to do, you need to conduct a study. FMEA, failure mode and effect analysis. Oh, certain chances of failure are there. If this failure happens, what will be the severity of the failure? What will be the severity of the failure? If the severity less, no, probably no, that is okay. But if the severity is very high, then you may have to reconsider. So this has to be taken care in the improved phase. There are certain beautiful tools beautiful tools which can help you to generate solution. They are, they, are, they are nothing but brainstorming only. But people give different, different name. People give different, different name because the purpose is different. But ultimately, all of them are brainstorming. Sometimes they call it critical thinking. Sometimes they call it no, nominal group technique. Sometimes they call it, you know, six hat thinking. There are different uh, techniques available using which you can 
develop solution, you can prioritize solution, and you can validate solution. Only the solution that you know is getting prioritized will be implemented so that the risk of inviting a, a, a new problem with the higher severity can be avoided. Have I answered your question? Understood, sir. Understood. Yeah. So you may have to again, you know, spend time to understand all of those tools. Everything requires some investment, right? Particularly your time and attention. All right. So fishbone diagram, I already told you. Now let's see how a fishbone diagram will look like. The cause and effect diagram, sometimes known as Ishikawa diagram, because the person who introduced this tool is Ish Ishikawa, the Japanese no, quality guru. See here, the effect is written on the head of the fish. What is what is the name of the head of the fish now? Obesity. Obesity. The exact problem we spoke, right? And then look at the sub bones, the categories. Six M is used as the category. Men, machine, material, method, measurement, and then mother nature. Mother nature is nothing but environment, or all the uncontrollables, all the uncontrollables will come in the mother nature. Now, the, now some of the factors are indicated here. Please note, if you actually develop a fishbone diagram, the number of factors can be, you know, as many as 100 plus. All of you agree? Even for the obesity problem, you can write down hundreds of factors. It depends on the quality of the brainstorming, quality of the input people are willing to share. All right. So you can, you can, uh, you, but make sure always, you know, for the brainstorming session, you uh, call all the stakeholders and necessarily the process owners. Necessarily the process owners. That's very important. Uh, sometimes the process owner might be an operator. Don't think that the you know, operator should not be invited for the brainstorming. You invite them because he is the process owner. Process owner means the one who is actually responsible for the process. His input is very, very valuable for you. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The patient's input is very important. Yes, sir. Same manner. All right. So, so we have drawn the fishbone diagram. Similarly, for another case, what is this case? How is it different from the previous one? What is this case? This is a problem related to? Wrong delivery or damaged or delayed delivery. And that is the why and all the X are written on the other side. But I see a problem in the fishbone diagram. Can one of you tell me what is the problem here in this fishbone diagram? The last part, wrong breaks. Wrong? The wrong breaks. Wrong break, huh? Sir, it should have been modern, yes, sir, but uh, it's written environment here. Environment. Oh, is <laughs> yes. mm. So, what I see as a problem here is there are three different failures considered together for analysis. Can you see that? Wrong delivery, delayed delivery, and damaged delivery. It would have been better if you if you draw the fishbone diagram separately. Am I correct? It might take time. It might take some you know, extra effort. I agree. But then, since the problems, one is different from another thing, it is always a good idea to you know, a lot 30 minutes, you know, for each of the issue. So, that way, I think, you know, there is a problem here. Otherwise, it's fine. So, now, step number seven is done, completed. All of you agree? Hereafter, you should not have any problem in listing your X factor. But now let, let there be hundreds of X factor, no worries. You list all of them, right? Now, what I want is, okay. I want you to, 
categorize each of the factor. Let's say the first factor. What is the first factor here? Packing material, wrong packing material. Now the wrong packing material, X1. What will be the impact if you use a wrong packing material? Tell me. Let's wrong say it is... Damage delivery. delivery. Damage delivery. Damage. Damage delivery. Since packing material is, you know, not the proper, like uh, Swiggy or Zomato or whatever. If the packing material is not proper, then every time there will be leakage. Every time there will be a damage. What do you think? The impact will be high or low? High. High. Impact will be high. Now tell me, do you think as a project leader, you have control over the packing material? Can you change the packing material as, as part of the solution you know, of your project? Will you be able to change this? Yes, sir. Why not? Yes, yes sir. We can. Then the control is also high. This particular X factor, impact is high. The control is also high. In this manner, I want you to segregate every factor. Now the second factor. Now what is this? Wrong product, Wrong from, product the from the supplier. Hmm. Now you ordered a vegetarian item, but then the hotel fellow has packed a non-vegetarian item. Hmm. And now the impact is? Impact is? High. High. But now the control. How is the control now? We will not be able to change the after delivery. Control is low. You are not monitoring, you know, what the hotel is doing, isn't it? You only collect the package and then deliver it. Control is currently low. You don't have any control over what the hotel is, you know, packing. Once the hotel has packed, you put it in your package and then you take it. That's all. All of you are with me? Impact yes. is high, but control is low. This is about x2 now misguiding description misguiding description so every delivery boy receives some description about the item being ordered about the customer customer phone number customer location yes or no yes sir if the customer phone number is typed wrongly or customer location is pinged wrongly, what will be the impact? Come on, impact. That would be high. Wrong delivery. The delivery time delay should happen. And now do you have control over it? Less. Who is responsible for it? Who is typing uh, the phone number customer. wrongly? Customer. So customer himself is pinging wrongly, right? So if you understand that customer himself is pinging his location wrongly, then the control is low. You can't do anything. And so light light. Light. Yeah. But if your uh, maybe light the light. customer support, if they are responsible, then probably you will right? And you can try to prevent it. So in this manner, I want you to segregate each of the factor X4, X5 x6 x7 x8 and x9 and so on so on say for example this x6 what is x6 what is x6 this one environment heavy rain heavy rain if there is a heavy rain next one week there is going to be a rain declared, right? So, so what will be the impact of this factor? Delivery uh, might get late. Uh, that means uh, uh, high. Yeah. During these days, uh, delivery get uh, late and uh, probability is high. 
Can you do something for it? Can I do something on it? No. No. Control is low. But, but please note, suppose in spite of whether it is raining or not, if you can still ensure your deliveries are happening smoothly, then you can understand the impact is less only. Am I right? True. So you need to understand the conditions properly. It's not that rain means always impact is high. No. If you are, if you have, let's say you have, you know, a vehicle which can operate even in the rainy time. Now the impact is less, isn't it? But if you are a small company where all your delivery executives are only using two-wheeler, now the impact is very high. Understand, all of you? So the, the conditions at the time of you know, the investigation has to be understood thoroughly so that you can classify the factors correctly. Correct? Now imagine you have classified all of them. So now we move on to the next stage. Next stage, what you have is an impact control matrix. Can you see here? There are four quadrants. High impact, high control. And some of the factor we understood, particularly, you no. Know, yeah. Particularly the X1 is high impact, high control. Can you bring all the factors which are high impact, high control and uh, high impact, low control? What? And you can place all the factors according to the quadrant they believe they belong. Do you understand all of you? Now, tell me how many factors are there in high impact, high control? How many are there in the high impact, high control category? Tell me. How many are there? One, two, three, and then four. These four are known as potentially critical factors. All of you are with me? Please confirm. Yes, sir. So now you segregated the potentially critical factors from the list of possible factors. Now these four factors will investigate one by one. Uh, sir, I have one question. Hmm. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding the like the impact and control. Like which one should we consider first? The high impact or, or the uh, high con like uh, high control? Impact first and then control next. Okay. okay. Thank you so but much. But anyway, we are we are giving importance to both. We are placed, we are giving you know four quadrants. In one quadrant, we have high impact, no low impact. Similarly, in other two quadrants, we have high control and low control. So we are balancing it. But finally, we will consider the first quadrant, which is high impact, high control quadrant, as the potentially critical factor. These will be considered for considered for validation. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, the, the, the second thing is high control, low impact. So it will come to the second consideration or maybe uh, high impact, low control will be coming into the second consideration. This is your second uh, consideration. This is first consideration. This is second consideration. This is third consideration. Mm -hmm. This is the last. For example, um, for example, imagine we are not covering any topic. Some topics we are not covering. Do you understand? We are not covering 
some topics in the training program. All right. Now, now there are several ways. You know, uh, maybe uh, there are certain ways we can uh, sort this out. One thing is you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, monitor session wise whether you know the all the topics are covered or not. Another side, you can uh, probably know proactively. You can uh, let's say you can give some assignments to the participants for some self learning. Do you understand? There are two 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 type two ways. You know the problem has been caused. One is the let's say the timing is not sufficient. That is one factor. Timing is not sufficient. That is one factor. Another thing is. Parallelly, you no, know, the assignments are not given. Let's you no know, uh, attempt is not made to cover up certain lighter areas in the form of assignments. Now there are two things. Please note. One is increasing the time. Already, what is our training time? Three hours. Seven p.m. to ten p.m. If we stretch it. 7 p.m. from you know, 7 p.m. to 10 to 7 to 11. That is, I don't think that is feasible. Already many people are sleeping in the training hall itself. <laughs> you see? So that is looking, you know, impossible. So we have low control here. So we are not going to consider this right now. Do you agree? Yes. This factor we are not going to consider. But can we at least, you know, try some assignments for every session? So that you know some extra coverage can happen. Do you understand? Yes. But of course, that has a low impact, but still I have a higher control over it. So that is given the next priority. Agree? Perfect, sir. Thank you so much. Very, good, very good, very good. So this is how we actually you know uh, deal with the factors. Once all the factors are sorted out, first we will take action here. Right, and these factors will qualify for the next level of uh, investigation. We call it as validation, but that particular uh, topic we will be discussing in the next level, right after Diwali. And many of you have already decided to travel with us after the after celebrating with Diwali, so we'll certainly be discussing with you. So I think all the recap points you all can. Understand now. If there are any challenges, please let me know. Perfect. Yes, sir. Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Mm. Yes. The next is correlation regression. Okay. So Hope people uh, here are gaining some clarity how to investigate, right? How to conduct the analysis, particularly root cause analysis. The fishbone diagram is already known to us, but here we are trying to streamline our thinking, streamline our you know actions also. See here we are we are learning to prioritize here. Please understand, we are learning to prioritize. I don't know, some of you have read this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, did I speak about anything in the program? No, right? So, Seven Habits. So, out of the seven... Ah, Stephen Covey, yes. One important habit which he mentioned is prioritize. We must prioritize correctly. Always first things first. That is what we are trying to do here, you know, with the impact control matrix. We are prioritizing. Our focus is on the first quadrant first. Then we come to the second quadrant. Then we go to the fourth quadrant. Then we again come to the, finally, the third quadrant. So this is called a prioritization. Whether it is prioritizing the problem or prioritizing the causes or prioritizing the solution, we want to be systematic. All right. So then now we move on to the next topic which is correlation and regression again uh, the correlation and regression i tell you this is definitely 
not in the scope of the yellow bells. This is a statistical module. But I will still would prefer to uh, talk to you about correlation and regression with some simple example. Shall we do it? Correlation and regression analysis, right? But you should be able to think in mathematical terms. Like, what is our pain metric? Our pain metric is Y. What is our cost factor? Maybe X1, maybe X2, maybe X3. Though there are so many X factors involved, right now we are concerned only about four factors. Maybe X1, X2, X3, X4. Because only they appeared in the first quadrant. X1, X2, X3, X4. Now, what is the relationship of each of this factor with our Y factor? So for that, to understand that, we will use a tool known as correlation and then regression analysis. First, let us understand the terminology and then we will uh, talk about a practical case. Yeah, so correlation analysis. So what is correlation analysis? What is regression analysis? And then terminology is used in correlation and regression and then few use cases. See here, I'm showing a diagram, which is basically a graph in my slide. I'm showing a graph. So, okay. So I'm showing a graph. This graph is known as scatter diagram. This graph is known as scatter diagram. Scatter diagram is also one of the seven basic quality control tools. Hope you, hope you know it. Pareto is also listed as one of the seven basic QC tool. We talked about it. Then uh, what is that? Um, then now scatter diagram, cause and effect diagram. Cause and effect diagram also listed as one of the seven basic QC tool. That also just now we discussed. Now the third tool out of the seven QC tool. The third one is scatter diagram. Each tool has got a purpose. You know the purpose of cause and effect diagram. What is the purpose of cause and effect diagram? To list. To identify the main possible. Possible cause factor. Cause the As a Six Sigma yellow belt, you will only you will say that you know it is only possible cause factor. But yeah. normal professional will say that you know it is used for root cause identification. Because sometimes people even call it as root cause analysis. But actually, Fishbone diagram is only revealing the possible X. From the possible X, we segregate the potential X using some other tool. And again, we validate it. Once the validation is done, now the root cause is clear. All right. Similarly, now it is scatter diagram. Scatter diagram is a nothing but a graph showing the relationship between X and Y. But the requirement for plotting a scatter diagram is both your x and y should be should be a continuous variable. Both your x and y should be continuous variable. You know continuous variable, right? Measurable characteristics. Then only scatter diagram is possible. All of you are with me. Temperature yes, versus yield. Concentration versus strength of the material. Both are measurable. Both are continuous. And under such situation, the X is known as predictor variable, Y is known as response variable. Now look at the graph. I keep on increasing the X. You can see here, I keep on increasing the X. What happens? Y? Y also keeps on increasing. Can you see that all of you? As I keep yes, on sir. increasing the X, Y is keep on increasing. That means relationship is positive. Moreover, Visually, I understand the lines, the Y values are forming a pattern. Can you see the Y values forming a pattern? What kind of pattern you are seeing here with the Y values? They linear. appear as a, Tell me, they appear as a? Linear one. Very good. They appear as a line. So the relationship is positive. The relationship is linear. And it looks like a perfect line in my slide. 
So it's a classical example of perfect positive linear relationship. How do I say this? By plotting a scatter diagram. All right. So this is here. Here, what is written here? Strong positive. But the better terminology is I remove the strong. Uh, if I use perfect, that will be the you know the best uh, terminology. All of you agree? I agree. It is strong. Yes. But more than the strong, it is perfect. Why do I call it perfect? If I, if I keep a scale, then the, all the points will lie exactly on the line. So it has become a perfect line. So it is better to use the word perfect than strong. So the first uh, line is understood, first curve. Now the second one. What kind of relationship you are seeing? As I keep on increasing the x, what happens to the y? It comes down. Decreases. So negative relationship. And relationship is written as strong. What do you think? Should I should I retain strong or should I change it to perfect? Perfect negative. This is perfect. People who know the subject, they will definitely use perfect. So perfect negative. Why it is perfect? It's a perfect line. All the points are lying exactly on the line. So perfect positive, perfect negative. Now the third diagram. Oh, sorry, third diagram. And tell me, third diagram, what kind of relationship you are seeing here? Are you seeing positive, negative? There's no relationship. Random or discrete one? Not right? showing any relations. The points are really scattered here. You can't make out what is the relationship between X and Y, isn't it? Yeah. You keep on changing the X. You are not able to understand anything. You are not able to predict anything about Y. Right? That means there is no relationship. Specifically, there is no linear relationship between X and Y. That's what we could understand by seeing the third diagram. So, the conclusion is there is no correlation. All of you understand what is correlation now? Correlation means we are trying to understand the linear relationship between an X factor and a Y factor. Agreed? We are trying to study the linear relationship between X and Y. Now moving on. Now I am showing, now I am showing another scatter diagram here. Now all of you, Look at this scatter diagram. What is the X factor here? Calorie consumed. Calories consumed. What is the Y factor? Weight gain. Do you think both are continuous variable? Yes. 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 Both are. So scatter diagram is plotted, and the results are the blue color dots. Now tell me. What kind of relationship it is? Is it strong, perfect, or moderate, or weak? What is your opinion? It's a perfect positive. Oh, this time also you want to call it perfect? Perfect means... Uh, strong, perfect. we can say strong. Moderate. So moderate. So now there is a contradiction. Somebody says strong, somebody says moderate. Because the tool used is your eye judgment, isn't it? Your eye is the tool now. For some of you, it looks like a strong. For some of you, it looks like a moderate. So we have to break all this, you know, difference of opinion. To break this, we have a formula. Can you see a formula here? So with the set of X value and Y value, X bar, you know what is X bar? Average of the X values. You know what is Y bar? Average of one minute, I'll reshare. Y bar is average of the Y values. You know what is N? What is N? The number of the number of points. 
you have the number of samples or number of data points. You have some set of data, right? So the number of data points. SX means standard deviation. SY means standard deviation of the Y. So how to calculate standard deviation and for X and Y, what is the meaning of it? And you have to understand some statistical concepts, which requires spending further time, right? That's why we have recommended you to come for the advanced modules also. However, this formula will, will definitely you know, eliminate all this difference of opinion. So the formula is designed in a way that R can become a maximum of one. It can be plus one or minus one. Whenever the points become perfectly linear, R will become maximum of one. Whenever there is no relationship, R will become zero. And see here, you have a scale. Zero to one this side, referring the positive correlation. Zero to minus one, referring negative correlation. And zero to 0 0.4, up to 0 0.4, the correlation is known as weak. 0.4 to 0.7, it is known as moderate. 0.7 to 1 is known as strong. Equal to 1 means perfect. Equal to 0 means no correlation. All of you understand how to define now? Yes, sir. Now let us check. Now tell me, what is the correlation you are seeing here for the first scatter diagram? Tell me. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Okay. So strong moderate. or weak or moderate? Strong or weak or moderate? Strong. Strong. That is confirmed by the R value. Can you yeah, see here? Yes. Two point, one so that is the advantage of you know having a formula and having a value. Now this one. This is strong positive, then this one? Uh, strong negative. Negative. Strong negative. 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 Strong positive, strong negative. And this one? Weak. Weak. Weak, weak one. Weak, weak positive, positive correlation. And this one? Weak, weak negative. negative. Weak negative. Now here, what is this? No correlation. No relation. No correlation. No relation. No relation. But here, here no correlation, no relation. But here, there is no correlation. But there is some other relation. Can you see here? This is called nonlinear relation. This is called nonlinear relation. So you can also call it parabolic relation. It looks like a parabola or you can also call it quadratic relation. So it is basically the scatter diagram that is giving us all this input. In addition to the scatter diagram, the R value, which is also known as correlation coefficient, is helping us to understand the relationship, nature of the relationships, positive or negative or strong or weak or moderate. Yes. Hope it is clear so far. Yes. Right. So 8.25 now. And uh, maybe, you know, after this, we'll uh, go for the short break. Now, regression analysis. Actually, after finishing this, we will take some example and then talk about it, right? So in regression, there are uh, certain terminology. Regression is nothing but a mathematical equation showing the relationship between the x variable and the y variable. Regression is nothing but a mathematical equation showing the relationship between x and y. And regression can help you to understand the direction of relationship. Direction means positive or negative. Size of the relationship, it can also tell you statistical significance. It can also tell you statistical significance. And then regression analysis can tell you whether your mathematical model is ready for prediction or not. So there is a method known as least square method or principle of least square method that will ensure the error in your regression equation is minimized. 
So regression model, regression equation, regression coefficient, and residual. See here, if your scatter diagram is like this, then the relationship is linear. Now you will go with the linear regression. See, look at your equation. Y equal to AX plus C. Sometimes people write it as Y equal to MX plus C. Have you studied this, all of you? Equation of line. Mm, equation of straight line. The school mathematics, you all have studied. And now we are going to you know, understand this little deeper so that we can use it in our work. If there is only one X, your, your regression is known as simple linear regression. If there are more than one X, then your regression is known as multiple linear regression. If there is only one X factor, your regression is known as simple regression. If there are more than one, then it is known as multiple linear regression. Similarly, if your scatter diagram is looking like this, you can easily understand the relationship is non-linear or relationship is quadratic. Quadratic means second degree. Second degree means in addition to the x, x square will come. You see here. Can you see x square? x square is there, x is also there. This is called a quadratic relationship. And how the relationship will look like, you are seeing here in the graph. Now look at the third. The curve is going up, coming down, again going up. This is cubic. In addition to the x square, x cube will come. So regression can be linear, regression can be quadratic, regression can be cubic or even higher order. It depends on the nature of relationship. But how do you understand the relationship? If you have some data and if you plot a scatter diagram, scatter diagram gives the clue what kind of relationship to be followed, isn't it? Because in the scatter diagram, it is visible. Here it is linear. Here it is quadratic. And here it is cubic. So our understanding can improve by making use of all of these tools. So, I erase all this. Okay. So, I think, uh, um, see here, for the same problem, for the same problem, the calorie consumption and weight gain, Look at the regression equation. Regression equation is developed. Y equal to mx plus c. In the place of m, what we have is, what we have is 0 0.4631. In the place of c, uh, in the place of c, 0.4631. Uh, no, m is 0 0.4631. C is minus 754. If you want to write this, see, this equation is developed by a software. This equation is developed by a software. But if you want to write it yourself, see here, y equal to mx plus c. How can you write this? You just have to know m and c. Am I right? The two constants have to be no, determine. So M is known as slope of the line. M is known as slope of the line. The C is known as the constant term. Now, I'll tell you. What is the meaning of slope? Slope means what? Slope the angle made by the curve with the x-axis. Or the angle made by the line with the x-axis. Now tell me, will you be able to measure this angle? Do you know any technique, any method by which you can measure the angle? Uh, it, uh, sine theta opposite side. Now first tell me the angle. Is it 30 degree or 40 degree or 45 degree? 45. Okay, 45. So how, how, how can you confirm the angle? 
you can use yes. your uh, protractor isn't it geometry box you all might have purchased several geometry box you know protractor use that protractor to measure the angle once the angle is measured you can find out m using this formula what is this formula m equal to what is this tan theta right all of you are all of you are with me or are you sleeping yes sir yes yes sir m equal to tan theta you measure the angle take the tangent now you got the m this is this is nothing but 0.4631 you go to the trigonometric table for tan 40 degree or tan 42 degree you will see this 0.4631 clear or if you are not comfortable with the procedure i am explaining you have to use some software one of the software is minitab all right but another alternate method is also there alternate method is you draw a line a horizontal line and a vertical line so that you can form a triangle using the line now will you be able to measure the length of the vertical line this line possible that is delta y similarly measure the length of the horizontal line that is delta x now you find out the ratio del y divided by del x that will also be equal to 0.4631 whichever method is easier you can follow that both both methods are easier right i know all of you are mathematical genius here you will either go with the tan theta or you will go with del y by del x but both method will give you the same answer but there is a meaning with the 0.4631 right i will tell you after you know giving you some break and now c how to find out the c you extend the line downward extend the line so that the line can cross the y axis you see this is your y axis your line is crossing the y axis here am i right this point the value of this point is nothing but the c constant term which is nothing but y intercept below 0 you have negative values am i right below 0 you have negative values can you see negative value here yes, yes or no yeah. yes now the complete equation is written by you just with the help of the data if i give you the x value and y value how many of you will you be, will you know will be able to write the regression equation after listening to this particular session if i give you the x data points and y data points will you be able to write the regression equation yourself possible or not if you don't you should plot a, you should take a graph sheet you plot the points x and y one by one scatter diagram then uh, you measure the angle or del y by del x then find out where exactly the line is touching the y axis now the mnc is known if the mnc is known now this regression equation you can write yourself but how to use this regression equation now what is the significance what kind of information that is giving us we will understand after a short break right i know you will be tired by now you learned a lot of uh, now mathematical uh, tools now statistical tools so you can relax for some time so 8:35 now so all of you can take a 15 minutes break refresh yourself and then come back we'll talk about the you know a uh, little deeper or the application aspect of the correlation and regression okay all right okay, okay. so so let us let us try to understand a uh, few more uh, details about regression okay so see here 
This is the regression equation we just now obtained. All of you, can you remember? This is the equation, right? Y equal to minus 754.6 plus 0.4631x. So what is M here? Tell me what is M here? 0.46. So this particular equation. Yeah, M is the slope. So M is the slope. And this is the regression equation with the, how many factors? Only one factor. So this is known as simple linear regression. Simple linear regression. Now this 0. 0.4631 can also be called as regression coefficient. Can also be called as regression coefficient. Now tell me this coefficient, is it positive or negative? Positive. Oh. Positive. That is why the, the that's why you know the relationship is considered positive. You remember earlier I have shown the what do you call? I have shown the graph also. You can see here. Can you see a positive relationship here? Same thing you can understand by looking at the regression coefficient also. One more information which you can understand is. When I increase the X factor, when I increase the X factor by one mm -hmm. unit, Y factor will increase by 0 0.46 unit. Where from I am getting this 0 0.46? From the regression coefficient of the particular factor. What is the meaning of it? When I increase X by one factor, I mean X by one unit, Y will increase by how many unit? 0. 0.46 unit. 0. 0.46. What is your Y here? Weight gain. Hmm. Your X is calorie consumption. So hmm. this regression equation is letting me to understand how my body is behaving with respect to the amount of calories I am consuming. Every additional calorie I consume will increase my weight by how many grams? 0 0.46 grams on an average. All of you are with me on the meaning? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now look at this graph, this scatter diagram. Now the equation is given as y equal to x. Now, what is the slope or what is the regression coefficient here? How much it is? Slope is 0 0.46. M equal to 1. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, what is this 1 signifies? Relationship is positive because 1 is positive. Hmm. And when I increase x by 1 unit, y should also increase by how many unit? One unit. Clear? See here. I increase x from 0 to 1. What happens to y? y also increase from 0 to 1. Can you see that? Again, I increase x by one more unit. What happens to y? y again increase also increase. Every increase in the X by one unit will increase your Y by one unit. What do you want to achieve? You want to maximize your Y or you want to minimize your Y? That is your problem, isn't it? Your problem is you want to either improve your Y or you want to decrease your Y. Now, what should you do with the X? Where from the knowledge is coming? The knowledge is coming from? Regression equation. Am I correct? But provided your regression equation is accurate. Otherwise, your regression equation will, will you know, may not give the right direction. Now, look at the second equation. Now, what is the equation of this regression line? Y equal to 2x. Why do I, why do I write y equal to 2x? When I increase x by one unit, how many unit y is increasing? When I increase x by one unit, y is increasing by 
Two unit. Two unit. One unit. Again, two unit. So that's why the equation is two. So it is plus two. So relationship is positive. And every increase, increasing the x value by one unit will increase the y, y value by two units. Hope all of you understand this. Clear? Yes. So, and here you are seeing the residuals. Here you are seeing the residuals. Residuals means you, we are concerned about the equation of the blue color line. But actually the points are not exactly on the blue color line, isn't it? So the points are away from the blue color line. Whatever distance the points are away from the blue color line, that is known as residual. If the residual is more, that will reduce the power of your regression line. Your regression model will become weaker if the residual is more. So that's why, you know, considering the uh, line, you know, line should be drawn in a way that the line is too close to many of the point, right? Majority of the points. All right. So residual can be positive, residual can be negative. Now look, look at the data here. X value, Y value. X and Y are available. Now you need to you need to perform correlation analysis, perform regression analysis, and you can you need to make a conclusion. So now first. Let us do the correlation analysis. Correlation analysis means we calculate R value. You remember we spoke about R, right? There is There was a formula. Pearson, correlation, coefficient. Anybody, you noted down the formula for R? Pearson, correlation, coefficient. Square root of summation of x minus x bar the whole square divided by sx multiplied by y minus y bar the whole square divided by sy and outside 1 by n minus 1 or something. So that's known as Pearson correlation coefficient. So that coefficient is found to be 0 0.97. Now tell me, if Pearson correlation coefficient is 0 0.97, the relationship is strong or weak or moderate? Strong. Relationship is strong, positive. I want you to find out R square. Now, R square is known as coefficient of determination. Now, R square is how much you are seeing in my screen? 0 0.94. 0 0.94. That means this factor has got 94% influence. This factor has got 94% influence on controlling your y factor. What is your x factor? Calories. What is your y factor? Weight gain. Weight gain. So weight gain is influenced by the calories. And that influence is how much? 94%. This is as per data. As per the experiment we conducted, as per the statistics, the influence is understood to be how much? 94%. That means this, this X is the major contributing factor. Am I right? Major contributor. That's the major contributor because, because influence is how much? 94%. That means as of now, there is only one root cause. As of now, According to the data, how many root cause? Only one root cause. You control your calories, you will reach your ideal weight. That's all. Useful information? According to the statistics, please note, the common sense is always common sense. Common sense is always common sense. According to the current condition, what is our data is saying? 94% reason for your obesity is the calories consumed. So you control the calories, you will be at your ideal weight. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that 
you can uh, eat junk foods. It doesn't mean that you don't have to sleep. It doesn't mean that you don't have to exercise. All of you are with me? That's our common sense, isn't it? According to the data, when I changed the calories, I realized your body is, you know, very responsive. You know, it is responding well to the change in the calories. So the change in the calories, if it is happening, your weight gain, no weight will definitely gain. So keeping an eye on the calories can bring down the weight gain by about 94%. Right? But also please note, while studying the calories, we have kept all other factors constant. We have kept all other factors constant. So if the other factors are also you know, changing and the understanding will change. So now we are happy with R square. So according to the statistics, the, say, you know, the influence is 94%. That means single root cause. My common sense, common sense is also telling me. My common sense is telling me I'm sleeping well. I'm taking care of the, you know, some physical activities. I'm controlling my stress level and everything. I only doubt on the calories. And so I studied my, you know, calories pattern. I realized this has more influence. So just one action can solve my problem. Hope it is clear to all of you. And the scatter diagram, the regression equation. See here, regression also gives the same thing. Look at the R square, 94%. Can you see here? There is an R square. Can you see? In the regression also, 94%. This is coming from here only. See here, same thing. Uh, this is the regression equation. You can see here, weight gain. And R square. R square, there are three types of R square. We will be talking you know, a little later. But right now, R square, if it is close to 100%, that means your investigation is over. You are fit to proceed to the improve phase. You are fit to proceed to the improve phase if R square is close to 100%. Anything above 80 percentage is acceptable. All right. Now, these are the recap points. You can read through the recap points. And tell me whether you could, you are comfortable with all the statement. If you are conducting analysis, coming to conclusion, Convert your conclusion into a mathematical equation. Convert your conclusion into a mathematical equation. And try to find out the R square value of the mathematical equation. If the R square is above 80%, your conclusion is perfect. If R square is below 80%, something wrong. Please understand, R square below 80% means something wrong. You have failed to include some of the root causes. If R square is below 80%, that means you fail to include some of the root causes. If I miss some of the root causes, automatically my R square will drop. For a linear model, if I simply proceed with the non-linear model, then also my R square will drop. Uh, and not only that, my regression coefficients will also become false indicator. Please understand, if you have a very good R square and the right mathematical model with the right regression regression coefficient, you can you can you can uh, figure out the solution very easily. What is solution? Assigning a value to your x. Am I right? What is solution? Assigning a value to your x. And uh, how much value you want to assign to your x? You know the expected y value, isn't it? If you substitute the expected y value in the mathematical equation, will you get the x value? That is known as your solution. 
I don't know how many of you understand this simple max. This is really simple. Probably, you know, if you watch this video multiple times, you come to understand. So that's all about the correlation, particularly regression. All right. Now, what is the application of this? How many of you are how many of you are able to connect regression now in your problem solving? Will you be able to use regression? Difficult. But, but you can definitely take the help of softwares like Minitab, Excel. Take some software. You take the help of you know, people like me or someone so that they can guide you when you are actually doing a project. Now let's, uh, people nowadays talk about Industry 4.0. Am I right? Everywhere they are talking about Industry 4.0. What are industry 4.0 technologies? Tell me. I want all of you to become active. You can come out of your sleeping mode. Automation. Automation. Okay, automation. Then IoT. IoT, Internet of Things. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Very good. Artificial intelligence. IoT. Come on. Machine learning. Machine learning. So, I'll write whatever you are telling now. Artificial intelligence, machine learning. Oh, sorry, machine learning, IoT. Then, somebody mentioned uh, automation. Automation is there, even, you know, for a long back itself. Okay. Then, that's all? Analytics. Okay, your uh, robotics. People call it big data analytics, right? R&D, continuous. Big data analytics, then? Continuous R&D. Continuous R&D, I can't put it under 4.0. R&D is there you know, in all uh, conditions. Big data. Can we say GPT? The thing? Smart, smart manufacturing. GPT is your artificial intelligence, AI tool. Mm -hmm. So what is VR? VR is virtual reality. Right? AR is augmented reality. So all of this, we call it 4.0. Am I right? Yes. Now, what is common? I already you know, mentioned this. What is common in all these technologies? All of this works based on the data. Am I right? Enormous amount of data being collected and used so that your chat GPT can work well, your you know, machine learning system can learn well, your IoT can work well, your robo can work well. Everything is working based on the data, quality of the data. If data quality is poor, what will happen? Your chat GPT and everything will fail, isn't it? It is ultimately the quality of the data, the quality of the input that decides the output. So now let us take an example, right? Okay. Let us take an example. So I stop sharing my screen. Okay. So... Uh, imagine you want to uh, reach a place. You want to reach a place uh, from your house, uh, a shopping mall. First time you are going, you want to find out how much time it will take for you to reach that place. Right? Because you, you have not been there earlier. So how do you find out the time? Google Maps. Google Maps. Google Maps. The moment you type your uh, destination and your current location, Google map will tell you the time required for you to reach that destination. This yes. is a classical example of artificial intelligence. Am I right? Yes, sir. AI tool. So your Google, Google map application itself is an AI tool. It is intelligent enough than you. Even if I ask you how much time it will take, you will tell, you will give me a wrong value. But that will be give me a correct value. How, how that application is able to think better than you know, a human being? 
and that that interacts with you like a human being from the other side isn't it it will be guiding you it will be giving you some advice it will tell you go in this route don't go this route this is blocked all these piece of advice it is giving that is why we call it artificial intelligence yes or no the chat yes. gpt will speak to you as if you know a human being is speaking from the other side that's why we call it artificial intelligence intelligence ultimately the basis what is the basis how it is working based on data right data and that intelligent is not, that intelligence the inbuilt intelligence is nothing but a regression equation that inbuilt intelligence is nothing but regression equation y equal to f of x what is y the time required to reach the destination correct you want to understand the why in order to give you the why google map will ask for certain x am i right or not it will first yes. ask you where is your what is your current location it will ask you what is your destination once you give the destination it will understand the distance between your current location and the destination that is the first factor yeah. all of you are with me that's the first factor x1 what is x1 distance to be traveled distance to be traveled tell me is this factor a critical factor for the time for the travel time yes yeah it is a critical factor that's why it is asking in your regression equation you should only include critical factor not irrelevant factor if you include a non critical factor your mobile application will fail miserably for example do you think your travel time depends on the color of the dress you are wearing no you can reach the place in red color dress or white color dress that's not going to make any difference that's not a critical factor but the distance is critical more the distance more the time positive relationship more the distance more the travel time mm. and distance is a measurable characteristics continuous data that means accurate information is available accurate information is possible more accurate the input data more accurate will be the output data output information correct then right. google map will ask you which mode of travel you prefer you want to go by walk or you want to go by two wheeler or you want to go by car or you want to go by train will it be asking yes now this is another input factor x2 this is another input factor x2 but this input factor is a categorical data categorical data four categories are available what are the categories walking two wheeler three wheeler and then train your regression equation can only work for one of these four values it won't work for other values suppose you go by an auto it may be different isn't it it will not work because it is designed only for four categories do you understand the limitation now all of you yes sir all right now there are two factors which are found to be critical x1 and x2 and both of them are included in your model and both of them are included in your model x1 is there x2 is also there then anything else x3 X3. what is x3 speed 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 okay your speed and the traffic condition are interrelated am i right yes sir yes the speed ah uh, speed you know the past history is available people uh, google map knows two wheeler means oh, what will be speed. the average? train means what will be the average speed past information will be available yes or no yes sir it yes, will sir. use that past information to calculate your travel time to calculate your travel time so now there are two things traffic condition another one is speed you have to give any one you don't have to give both the things 
you don't have to give both the things if you give both the things that will weaken your model because these are interrelated isn't it if i say yes. traffic condition is less automatically it will understand you will you will be able to go above average speed if traffic condition is average then your speed will also be average so that's how the equation will be working so it's not a good idea to give two into to include two factors which are interrelated right say for example uh, if you are studying about people's you no know, uh, performance people's performance or employee productivity based on age based on experience based on salary all these factors are interrelated am i right people mm. having you know uh, age on the upper side automatically their experience will also be on the upper side automatically they will be they will be drawing you know more salary because they have more experience etc so there is no point of including all the three factors while measuring the employee productivity you don't have to study all the three do you get my point three factors yes, are interrelated out of the three which is really critical tell me age is critical salary is critical or uh, experience is critical tell me age is critical experience experience very good age so, is critical hmm okay maybe if you think if you think uh, they are not related age is separately functioning and uh, experience is separately functioning then you can have both otherwise if they are interrelated it is better to include only the critical one in your model the one that is you know uh, the other other factors you can exclude otherwise what happen your regression equation will be weakened so coming coming back to the same uh, google map so the vehicle is another factor distance is another factor and the traffic condition is another factor traffic condition google won't ask you it has the information available within but it will ask you for the route there are three route available gentlemen which route you want to go isn't it the route is another deciding factor now there are so many factors that can decide your travel time the particular uh, brand of vehicle you are using isn't it yamaha bike can go faster tvs tvs moped will go slower so these are all mm. factors but then less critical am i right or not yes sir and that will complicate you know my thinking and then uh, complete regression model so only the critical factor three or four critical factors are included and the regression equation is developed and in the background the coding is written using the regression equation if customer gives this input value x1 x2 x3 x4 you use this equation and calculate the y value and display the y value to the customer now do you understand how this app is calculating your uh, travel time tell me artificial intelligence this is known as artificial intelligence yes. chat gpt is writing you know the uh, whatever you want the chat chat gpt to write it will write it will write a letter also for you it will write a paragraph it has categorized your writing style into certain uh, particular type friendly letter isn't it and uh, different styles friendly style and fun assertive style assertive style and uh, it has categorized the styles of writing into five or six types now if you ask accordingly you know whichever style you prefer it will it will keep the language in that manner this is what we learned as ctq unless and until you make your requirement specific measurable at least you categorize isn't it if you can't categorize 
and you can't think of you know developing solutions for the people's problems the ctqs have to be very very clear so so one thing we understood how artificial intelligence is you no know, intelligence is working it is basically a software it is basically an algorithm which will you know perform like a human being it will think and perform like a human being this is known as artificial intelligence instead of a software instead of an algorithm if i have a physical machine i have a physical machine which will perform like a human being let's say it will it will perform like an operator it will it, it plays the uh, no uh, raw material arranges the finished product this is called robo isn't it hmm. which is programmed and based on the data it receives it will take actions similar to the human work if it is a software we call it artificial intelligence but if it is a machine we call it a robot and the field is known as robotics what is the basis in all, what is the, what is common in all of this data in order to mm. develop systems the background knowledge is you know the regression so many x factor and then the y factor okay and imagine uh the you mentioned speed while talking about the google app google map when you are traveling fast then google map will understand you are now moving fast and accordingly it will reduce your travel time have you seen that earlier it would have told you, you no know, it will re it will take 45 minutes for you to reach as you actually progress and if you yes. are moving at some higher speed it will reduce the time now you will reach in 35 minutes how it understood you are moving fast how it understood you are moving fast by location sir geo location now uh, how how google has when time is less satellite when satellite. time is less to reach that location how the satellite detected your location no when the time is less uh, the, uh, to reach the location through the you gps have the mobile device is it you have the mobile device with you always yeah. while sleeping also you keep the mobile phone with you gps so the mobile phone is acting as a sensor yes or no yes sir so this sensor is sending the signal your every instantaneous location is sent to the app via your mobile phone so you are using sensors and sensors collect data and exchange the information with the other system and so that the system can produce the output if you make use of sensors internet to connect different system you call it iot am i right mm -hmm. internet of things whatever happens in your machine shop you can you are able to see in your you know mobile phone itself the machine temperature has become so high and it gives a it gives you know a red color uh, warning in that particular machine yes. in your mobile itself you could come to know hey what an immediately you will you will call the plant manager hey look at that machine number 402 the temperature is so high go switch off something so this is yeah. an application of iot all right where you have kept sensors so that the sensor can collect data and whenever the data is abnormal then the system can take appropriate action clear yes sir. imagine you you are wearing a smart watch suddenly your body temperature is you know body is running a higher temperature now what will happen the smart watch will book an appointment with a nearby hospital for you because your body temperature is abnormal this is what we call it iot isn't it i think all these things will start happening very soon people are exploring iot right it can even you know inform your family inform the nearby uh, what do you call nearby hospital if you are driving it will slow down your vehicle speed and all these things so all these actions the these uh, you know technologies will take we call it iot 
So, we spoke about artificial intelligence. Hmm. We spoke about what is that? Robotics. Robotics. And we spoke about IoT. IoT. Then uh, what else? Data analytics. Ah, big data analytics. Imagine. Imagine your sensor is collecting data at a particular frequency. Can you tell me what will be the frequency at which your sensor will collect the temperature from the machine? Every every minute or every 30 seconds every 30 seconds or every 10 seconds? Every minute. Every minute. It can be every 10 seconds also possible, right? It all depends on your setting. Let's say you are setting it every 10 seconds. Tell me, in one hour, how many readings will come? Six. Six. Every Six. 10 seconds, one reading. So in one minute, how many readings will come? Six. Six readings. So in one hour, 6 into 60, 360 readings will come. 360 reading in just in just how, how, many, how much time? One hour. One hour. So in one day, 360 multiplied by tell me. Multiplied by 24, right? Every day, 24 hours. 8640. Yeah. And then within a week time, how much data you will have? And you might have hundreds of such sensors in your factory, isn't it? Yes. So a lot of data is now getting populated in your Excel sheet. Can you see that, all of you? Now, what are you going to do with all this data? You have to take meaningful decision, isn't it? You have to make meaningful decision, meaningful conclusion. This is known as big data analytics. Am I right? Yeah. Police department has nowadays you know, kept a CCTV camera everywhere. Every 100 meter, there is a camera. How many cameras in the city? How many video footage? So, so much data being collected in just one hour time. Yes or no? Yes. But yes, sir. Only the abnormal conditions will require your attention, will need your attention. You will be taking some action. Yes or no? If vehicles are simply going in the yes. road, it's not a problem. But if a vehicle is going at an abnormal speed, then it, it requires your attention. This, this, this domain is known as what? What is this? So much you are dealing with so much amount of data, but you only look at the useful part of it. Hmm. What is this? Big data analysis. Ah, you only told me big data analytics, right? I am not an expert in all these areas, but I am only telling you that data is the basis. Data is the basis. basis. So the accurate the data, the accurate will be the you know uh, findings and hence the actions and the performance. So the industry 4.0 is a result of your ability to you know, uh, collect information using in the form of accurate data. Thereby, it can take right action. And the action is always guided by guided by a function, y equal to f of x. Am I right? Yes, sir. Very good. So that's how it is. And you have the other fields also in this manner. Augmented reality, virtual reality. You all know virtual reality, right? Yes, sir. The physical world is simulated virtually. Physical world is simulated, simulated virtually. virtually. This, uh, it's not a real image. It's not a real image. But similar to the real world, Similar to the physical world, a virtual image is created, like, like you know, uh, playing in a roller coaster game in VR. You will get a feel like you are going in the roller coaster, isn't it? But yeah, actually, but actually, it is there is no roller coaster. So we call it 
virtual reality understand all of you yes yes sir yes, then sir. what is augmented reality what is augmented reality it is a real picture it's a real picture of the physical world augmented yes. reality means real picture of the physical world like for example your factory in the as it is condition you are seeing in your mobile phone is it a real picture yes sir real picture but operators are moving it will you know it will show something is moving you know a kind of you know an image like an operator will be moving or the operator name will also be you know appearing on the image do you think that the operator will have the name written on his head no but your software will detect so and so person is you know ram kumar so it will it will indicate ram kumar ram kumar is moving you no know, from this machine to that machine or the boiler temperature is currently at a 1200 degrees celsius it will show so the real picture with additional information made available that you call it as augmented reality am i right yes sir how is your heart functioning so people somehow you know they put uh, some sensors or some camera to understand how your heart is beating you could see everything on a cam on a big screen now and now the surgery is going on and that camera is showing the heart also in addition it is you know giving lot of valuable information isn't it it is not only showing you know the heart in addition it is showing you know what is the name of the part and everything this is what we call it augmented reality augmented. so this is this this kind this knowledge is the basis for all of this new technologies to evolve all of you can you see that so if you are if if you are thinking about industry 4.0 it has to be evolved from 3.0 okay sir which is the ability to collect accurate data you know and then having the process effective enough and efficient enough if your processes are effective enough and efficient enough you can definitely automate some of this process and you can give it a different name like you know the robotics etc 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 hope you all could understand so now what will i do is i'll just show you a small uh, application a dmac application thereby you understand what kind of activities will be happening in the improve phase and the control phase shall we see a small case study hmm yes sir yes sir yes sir sure so here after please uh don't worry about the product or service because ultimately our actions depends on the data only you can work in any industry if you know how to use data if you know how to use data you can work in any industry people who are today working in manufacturing industry if you get an opportunity to work in a service industry uh, then you no know, in the future you can you can immediately accept or accept the offer isn't it it's possible so now this particular case study from the picture you can understand it is a manufacturing industry it is a manufacturing industry the process they follow is pressure die casting pressure die casting they melt metal and then they inject the metal at a high pressure into a die and then inside the die it will cool and then they will open the die take out the casting and your product is ready so in such an industry 
the problem is projection the problem is projection see here some important portions of the important elements of the project charter i am highlighting here can you see a business case what is the importance of the business case here tell me financial. ah financial benefit 18 lakhs this is what is you know important to your uh, project uh, uh, project sponsor your business case should be impressive it will be impressive only if you highlight the financial benefit all of you agree yes sir yeah very very important when i say financial benefit we call it as z variable am i right yes according to our discussion this is z now problem statement problem statement should talk about why it can either be ctq or ctb here in this case what is the ctq or ctb projection rate you should be able to communicate the pain you should be able to communicate the pain when i say rejection rate people immediately catch the point am i right yes or no yes sir and then scope statement scope statement should help your sponsor to understand the boundary in which factory you want to do the project and in which department and in which product and what kind of failure you are addressing or what kind of defect opportunity or what kind of defect can you see all this information here the product the kind of defect and what what is out of scope that is also highlighted so the purpose of scope statement is to to show the boundary and goal goal should be smart what is the meaning of smart smart yes means sleep specific specific measurable specific relevant and time specific measurable achievable relevant time bound see here timeline is also given within 4 months we are going to reduce the rejection from 15.5 to 7.7.75 7 then the project leader finance controller project sponsor all of them will be signing so this is how the what do you call the oh god project charter will look like okay so we just move on then we move on to the measure phase uh, now problem understanding for problem understanding you can you can uh, do your give your best see here photographs are added so that the project team comes to a solid understanding do you think this is important really important isn't it otherwise people you know working with assumptions is not going to deliver the result and now measure phase in measure phase the measurement system analysis is done to judge on the measurement error the measurement system is found to be quite good there is no error found and now the baseline performance look at the baseline performance how much is the rejection rate how much is the rejection rate 11.4% uh, 11% the company has a wealth of one year information you see here one year consistently happily the company is maintaining a rejection of how much 11% but but in your project you also collected data for one month or one and a half month can you see that here from march to february to march mm -hmm. and now your data is telling you that rejection percentage is how much 15 now which one you will consider as baseline 15% or 11% tell me 15% sir hmm shall we use the past data or shall we use the recently collected data 15% recent data ha ah, recent data because we have taken enough care to collect that data and that we can rely on that so 15% the problem is now 
redefined. Problem is now redefined. Then for the rejection rate, it's converted into DPMO. You can see here. Rejection rate is converted into DPMO. There are three types of defect they are trying to address. So defect opportunities are three. They, they observed 6,700 pieces. They, they noted 1,048 defects. So they converted that into DPMO. So your baseline DPMO is how much? 51,000. Now analysis phase. Fishbone diagram for each of the defect. Can you see here? For every defect type, separate analysis is conducted and all these factors written here are possible X factor. Similar to the impact control matrix, here we have a cause and effect matrix. Some weightage is being allotted. After allotting the weightage, the green color factors are considered as potentially critical factors. High impact, high control factor. How many green color factors are there? 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. So 9 factors are considered potentially critical. So for all of these 9 factors, you must validate. Yes, sir. These are the essential few from the many. Now we devise validation method for nine factors. Some of the factors, Gemba walk is recommended. What is Gemba walk? You physically visit the place and observe the things when the process is happening. That is known as Gemba walk. Some verification validation can be done by Gemba walk, right? You go to the place and then observe. Some uh, information or some factor can be validated by data collection. Some of the factors are validated by experts' opinion. See here, injection pressure, they realized that, you know, making changes in the injection pressure is a very uh, critical job. So they, said they decided to go with the experts' opinion because practical limitations we have to accept sometimes. Hope all of you agree with me. Right? Practical limitation. So, like, for example, uh, now also, now the time is 9.45. So, there are practical limitations, isn't it? So, listening to the training after uh, 9.30, it is really difficult. So, practical limitation here. So, experts opinion. But certain factors, no compromise. Some experimental verification is recommended. See here, hypothesis testing. And then incoming raw material. Incoming raw material, laboratory testing. And for maintenance-related factor, maintenance report. Can you see all of you, the validation plan? Now we go factor by factor. First factor, insufficient ladle. We physically visited the place and verified that Ladles are really insufficient. Ladles are really insufficient. That is verified, validated. And another factor, people do not have the process knowledge. That is also validated by interacting with the people. They don't know what is die casting and they don't understand why the temperature is important, why the you know, short volume is important. All of these, you know, they don't have any idea. So that is also validated. And now pouring time. The time is consumed to pour the metal into the die. People told that that is also critical. But when we actually collect the data, we noticed that there is only a difference of two seconds, sorry, one second between the maximum time and the minimum time. So that means there is, you know, there is not, there is not much difference. The pouring time is uniform. So it's not significant. And now for some of the factor, the statistical procedure, I mean, the experiments are conducted, particularly see here, pouring temperature, dye temperature, and dye holding time. These are certain X factors. And the statistical study revealed that all the factors are consistent. How do we know that all the factors are significant? All the factors are critical. Look at the statistics. This is known as P-value. 
whenever the p value is 0.05 or below then the factor is critical so what is this p value you will be learning in the advanced module and then see here look at the data collection in order to perform that particular experimental study which is known as anova near about 27 experiments are conducted after 27 experiment what is our conclusion all the three factors are critical that means is required and now incoming raw material testing the incoming raw material is tested in a third party laboratory you see here laboratory value is here and the, and the requirement is here and now what is this report is telling there is no problem that means factor is insignificant now final validation result out of the nine factor one two three factors are are considered insignificant but how many factors are significant or how many factors are really critical six now for each of the factor action is required now we move on to improve phase what is the tool used here yy analysis tool used is yy analysis, analysis. why people are use going for insufficient mm -hmm. short volume why are they going because they are pouring with assumption why are they assuming because they are using you know different ladles why are they using different ladles there is a shortage of ladle why there is a shortage of ladle there are no extra ladles provided now what will be the solution for this problem extra ladles we must provide it so this is the power of y by analysis sometimes solution will become obvious if you perform y by analysis right so almost the root cause as well as the solution is understood in this manner y by analysis is performed for all these significant factor and improvements are suggested this is a kind of brainstorming you see here but while while recommending the solution again you know a recommendation has come to go for some experiment because certain factors are measurable characteristics particularly the temperature you know and the holding time and etc and for maintenance the the project team has suggested to go for clit maintenance procedure cleaning lubrication inspection and tightening should be part and parcel of the daily work so something like that and now for the doe see here solutions are implemented extra ladle provided process knowledge being imparted to even the operator and preheating provision is provided and uh, clit maintenance record document is created i mean this has become a you no know, part of your daily work and again to optimize these three factors x1 x2 x3 pouring temperature dry holding time and dry temperature they have decided to perform a separate study which we call it as design of experiments after performing the design of experiments we realized the rejections are coming down rejections are low when the pouring temperature is 800 can you see here in the graph rejection is less than 8% when the pouring temperature is 800 when pouring temperature is 850 rejection is increasing similarly dye holding time when the dye holding time is 12 rejection has gone below 7% but when dye holding time is 16, rejection has you know, increased. Similarly, dye temperature, when it is 195, rejection is low. So this has given us some clue. So these are the optimal combination. Pouring temperature, 800. Dye holding time, 12 uh, seconds. And then dye temperature should be 195 degrees Celsius or something. So those values are considered the optimal. And the process is restructured and now after uh, all these you know suggested improvements again data is collected see here near about you know uh, 12 times some study is conducted and after uh, 12 particular batch of production the rejection rate has reduced to how much it is 4.4 percent now it is 4.5 percent so what do you call the rejection has come down and now there is a control plan there is a 
control plan so what should we do so that the same problem cannot come again so the team has decided to uh, monitor the rejection percentage they you know uh, they want the rejection percentage to be within certain limit and then the training has been you know become uh, their uh, regular activity and then similarly the maintenance has become a regular activity and monitoring of some of the critical factors has also become a regular activity so this is this this is known as the control plan suggestion and now the improvement achieved is documented so sigma level improved rejection rate has decreased leading to a saving of 12.7 lakhs and similarly another 5 lakhs they are able to save because of you know the increase in the production rate and other things with the overall saving of nearly 18.27 lakhs so that's it so this is how the flow will be but again in the improvement control phase improvement control phase the uh, you know the steps will be much easier because if you have defined it properly measured it properly and also analyzed it properly then developing a solution will be you know very very simpler and easier all that required is you know a structured thinking and a teamwork and again we will be using you know tools similar to the brainstorming and other things and similarly in the control phase uh, control plan and control chart will be very very important tools so all those things you you will be you now you have to uh, deepen your understanding so that you can execute any project using this dmac methodology so this completes our uh, training for the yellow bells and now we have few more minutes may I request all of you to uh, come on video and uh, if there are questions you can ask or any feedback you would like to say or uh, some of you you have uh, upgraded to the green belt you can let me know on that and then we can probably in another 5 10 minutes we can wind up so tell me have you learned something here as part of this yellow belt training program yes sir yes sir, yes, sir definitely yes sir maybe if you of you can share your experience definitely just wanted to say thank you for the you know sharing the and extending the support towards the learning the six sigma that will really help us uh, you know uh, to uh, enhance our uh, knowledge and experience to for the new world and the new methodology very good very good sure i strongly recommend all of you to upgrade your understanding this is uh, this is only a beginning this is just a beginning you really have to uh, deep dive particularly in the statistical tools statistical aspect because when it comes to data unless and until you know how to analyze the data then uh, no further proceeding will be difficult you may have to rely on you know the separate analyst for that so it's not that much difficult statistics but people uh, always say that you know the statistics is uh, very difficult to learn but actually not so we'll be giving you much more uh, you know Uh, easier examples to help you understand even the statistics and then statistics will become you know very easier thing and that too if you also uh, spend some time on uh, the software like minitab then uh, definitely you can you can uh, produce the results faster so minitab practice also side by side will be doing and that will definitely simplify your time okay are there any any questions i think i would see some question in the chat box what should be the limit of human error doing any measurement yeah what is our uh, understanding measurement error should be lesser than 10% including human error including human error including you know instrument error including environment error everything put together finally it should be lesser than 10% less than 10% yes answer is already given in the course but it doesn't mean that you no know, you can always have 10% no isn't it you try to uh, minimize the error 
If you keep it lesser than 1%, that's great. But rule uh, AAG, AAG is the you know, uh, body, uh, automotive industry action group, which devised all these guidelines. Measurement error should be lesser than 10%. Mm. All right. Anybody anybody would like to say something? I think uh, some uh, link has been posted, right? If, you, mm. if all of you could spend this one minute right now to write, to give your rating. I have seen a few of you have given the rating already. Uh, five star rating and then a uh, few lines would be highly appreciated. If you could write two lines about your learning experience so that people you know can uh, come to know about the um, kind of learning they will have they will get from our platform unless and until you know the learners share people will not believe because we can always say we are great but if you say then the value is different. So, I suggest you all to spend a minute and write a review. All of you, do you have a link for your convenience? I'm posting it here in the chat box. Sir, what will be the exam timings? Exam coming Saturday. Coming uh, Saturday. Timing? Timing 4 p.m. 4 o'clock, you will get the link. And within that day, you can complete any time. It is, it is just, you know, 25 questions. You have to score 60%. Uh, is it next Saturday or on 18th? Uh, 18th. Today, today, what is the date? This 5th. Yeah. 5th. Yeah. 11th itself, you all can finish. Because the more uh, the time you take, the more you will forget. So I, yes. I want you to uh, take the exam at the earliest. I think even uh, if you could take the exam now itself, now itself, then uh, no, you can easily clear it. So anyway, you can just go through the material, go through the recording, just try your you know uh, effort, some effort from your side. Maybe one mock exam also probably I'll request Prabhagar to uh, share with you, and you can try that. And then it it is just 10, 15 minutes time because 25 questions all MCQ. Okay. Even if you are busy on the day with the mobile phone itself, you can give the exam wherever you are. Make sure you have the internet. That's all. And so sir, then, when, can, when can we expect the certificates? Like yeah, and this is very 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 good question you asked because every time I see people you know asking when is the certificate, when is the certificate. I don't want you to you know uh, keep on inquiring about the certificate. So you complete the exam. Then uh, result you come to, you get to know the result within uh, the same time you will get the result. From that moment, I am telling you maximum three to four weeks of time. Three to four weeks of time because the certificate is uh, you know the procedure is the government procedure. You know there are uh, you know uh, certain things needs to be followed. All of you have to uh, complete your documentation. Even if one of you, you know, take uh, more time, then what will happen? The whole batch will be kept pending. Okay, sir. Last candidate, once he clears his, you know, all the documents, photo and everything, then it will be processed. And normally it takes three weeks for us. So three to four weeks maximum. Then the certificates will be uh, you know, received. Immediately the soft copy will be shared with all of you. Okay. Immediately, soft copy will be shared. Okay. And subsequent to that, within another couple of days, the hot copy will be dispatched. And, and then, you know, you will be receiving. So this is the procedure and that will happen. So please allow us that three to four weeks lead time. If you ask in the second week itself, then it will be a very embarrassing situation for us, right? We know the certificate will be very helpful to you and needed for you. But... Mm -hmm. As soon as it comes from the MSME, immediately it will be shared with all of you. Right. Okay, so, so the soft copy will also take uh, three to four weeks. Yeah, yeah. See, okay. Uh, okay. soft okay. copy and then hard copy, almost you no, know, it will happen parallelly. So, just and a matter of one or two days' time, just to ensure the dispatch things. All so right. Uh, this 11 and 12, there is no class for Green Bell. Yeah, yeah. Next week there is no class because next week we want you to celebrate your Diwali, so there is no class. 
So next Saturday and Sunday, you can spend time with your family, you know, celebrating the Diwali. And then, same manner, we will continue. The What is the date then? 18th, I believe. So 18th, we are going to meet again. So 11, 12 is half. No, yes, there is a leave. Sir, still I am con still I am confused that when is the exam? 11, 12, or 18, 18. 18, 18. Exam, yellow belt exam is on 11. Exam, you don't have to come here or don't have to come to any meeting. Okay. You are there in the WhatsApp group and your mail IDs are with us. And you in your email ID, the link will come and notification will be posted in the WhatsApp group also. Saturday, 4 p.m. to till midnight. Whenever you feel you are available for 15 minutes, you finish the exam. Okay. And sir, if someone is unable to pass the exam, then what, what will be the next procedure? Just asking. Yeah, yeah. Rework. Yeah. <laughs> One more appearance. One more appearance. So, two appearance. <laughs> Maximum if two appearance. Otherwise, after the third attempt also, if someone fails, then we will discuss with him why he failed. We'll figure out and then we'll suggest him accordingly. Maybe he may have to retake the course completely. Is it an open exam? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, open book exam. Open book exam, you can use any material, whatever is the resource you have. Right? It's an open and book. How exam. long uh, does the videos will be available in the class? Three years. Three years. Three years it will be available. Minimum. Thank you, sir. Enough? So just one question. Will the exam yeah. happen through the mobile application because I don't have any Android devices with me? Or is it going to be like... Um, exam, uh, a, a link will be shared in the email only. You can write it. That has nothing to do with your mobile app. See, even if you don't use Android or uh, if you are using any you know Apple or some other device, then also you can install the app. There are certain procedures you need to follow so that you completely understand our you know way of... Uh, uh, learning system. So once you understand that, you will feel more comfortable. Right? The videos and other things we give only through the app. If you are really concerned about the video, make sure you install it now itself. You know what happened? Every 15 days, we get different batches. Mm. And then uh, tracking the information candidate will be much more complex later on. So anything, you know, during your course period itself, you set it right. All right. Uh, mm. sir, thank so quick, you. quick question um is it okay if we can share our linkedin profile so that we all can connect with each other is that okay yeah. that's a great idea all of you please uh, share your linkedin profile i will also share mine let us all connect with each other in linkedin and whenever needed we can also recommend each other on our you know uh, skills on uh, lean six sigma tools and techniques so this can certainly you know uh, help us to boost and accelerate our growth and this as a community we should do so please uh, share the linkedin profile and then we all can you know connect and uh, definitely a lot of opportunities can uh, can be shared and moreover i am also available uh, in the youtube channel I'll, my channel name is six sigma with the gsk if some of you would like to you know uh, follow me in the youtube yes you can find me the same name, Six Sigma with the JSK, where you can uh, find a lot of lectures of mine, which might also be, you know, helpful for you. All right. I think 10, uh, 7 now. Are we good to wind up now for the day? All right. Yes. So wish you all the very best. Yes. And uh, hoping to see all of you growing very fast in your career, right? And you should share me the success stories at the you know shortest possible time. I am eagerly waiting to hear such news. All the very best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.